There is nothing in nature that takes one second. There are no biological processes that takes one minute or one hour. These are all human constructed time units. Nature actually cares about astronomy and nature cares about where the sun and the moon and earth is. Modern man, not so much. These are the most famous watches today. There are a million designs of this, you know this. They're all very abstract. Two times 12 hours. Test these watches on your kids and your youth. They don't understand them. Their only mission is to coordinate and monitor machines and humans and humans acting like machines. But of course, that's very important to our society. That's why we meet here today, because we have the same time. But in the process of becoming expensive jewelry, these watches lost their connection with astronomy and nature. You could say that these watches are valuables, but they don't show the value of time. Processes in nature takes a dose of energy, an amount of energy. And the time units for energy in nature is a moment, a sunrise, a sunset, a day, a tide, or a season. Photosynthesis does not start at a time. It starts when the conditions are right. Migration of life, such that the wild beast in the Serengeti or algae bloom in the Atlantic, waits for the moon, sun, and earth to come in the right positions. And this is not astrology. This is astronomy. It is science. Near-Earth astronomy influences nature. We knew this in ancient times, but we have built ourselves away from it. I will, in the following, introduce you to some very basic facts and science about near-Earth astronomy. And I will summarize those facts in how a watch should be designed to be better synced with nature. So, Earth orbits Sun. One orbit takes 365.25 days. So, the universe is not perfect. When looking from above, from north, Earth orbits Sun counterclockwise, Moon orbits Earth counterclockwise, and the Earth rotates counterclockwise. The whole solar system rotates counterclockwise. And just to add to the complexity and show you how beautiful the universe can be, we can observe our solar system, how it looks from a distance. So we are in the Orion arm of the Milky Way galaxy, and where are we heading? We are heading towards the star Vega in the star constellation Lyra. But back to the Copernican look of the inner solar system. Here you see I have indicated the winter and summer season in our orbit. And seasons are the most important time units for life on Earth. Many people believe that seasons come from the varying distance from the sun. It is not so. We are closest to the sun in January. And we are farthest from the sun in July. Good for Australia, you could say. So at least for the northern hemisphere, it does not connect that the distance causes seasons. The seasons happens because of Earth is tilted. And these are all the planets of the solar system. And you see it's a chaos out there. <laughs> They're all tilted in some, some other, uh, other way. Earth is tilted around 23 degrees. And that means that half the year we are pointing towards the sun. And the other half we are pointing away from the sun. And that is what makes seasons. I'm born and have grown up north of the Arctic Circle. 
And of course, the seasons there are totally extreme because we uh, experience this very much. So we have six months with the winter, and we have six months of uh, sun. And nature explodes in the summertime while it hibernates beneath a blanket of ice and uh, snow in the wintertime. So the tilt is how seasons are created, and it is a wonderful mechanism that distributes energy on our planet and making turbulence and dynamics in the atmosphere, in the oceans, and makes movements of life. And movement creates life. The tilt also makes the sun seemingly move north and, north and south. And we have four important milestones. We have the winter solstice, we have the summer solstice, and twice, twice a year, the sun is straight above the equator. And we call that equinoxes. That is so important for us that in ancient time, we built huge stone structures to remember those milestones. Pyramids, temples, and stone hinges, in plural, though this is the most famous one. The season and the tilt decides the two most important times which we experience every day, and that is the sunrise and the sunset. Seem to forget that, but that's the time when most life migrates every day. And everyone interested in nature knows this. And we are partly aligned, the human species, we're partly aligned because we have something called rush traffic in these hours. Earth rotates from west towards east. And that is why the sun appears to rise in the east. But it's we that rotate. Fun fact is that we have different speeds depending on where you are on the planet. So when you are at the poles, you're barely turning around. But if you are at the equator, I don't know if you have felt the experience, but if you are at the equator, you have actually a speed of 464 meters per second. And that is, in fact, the fastest place you can be in the solar system, which you can stand on. It's the, on the equator of Earth. Here in Fredrikstad, at 60 degrees north over latitude, your speed is around 240 meters per second. So if Earth stopped just for one second, then you would fly 240 meters. And which direction? East. So I will always advise people to keep some empty space <laughs> to your east, just in case. The moon, moon orbits Earth. One moon takes 29.5 days from full moon to full moon. 29.5 days from full moon to full moon. And we call that a moon because it's not a month. A month is 28 days, 30 days, 31 days. That's pol politics. It's not, nothing about science. Uh, the moon is influencing life on Earth. Many biological processes take a moon. And during the full moon, nature goes wild, and you get all these passionately fertile natural things. And uh, for example, the coral reefs seeds during full moon, and so many other species do. The moon swings around Earth 12.5 times a year. So that is the reason the lunar calendars always must be adjusted. And humankind have made lots of lunar calendars through history. And that's why we still today have holidays that we have to move every year, or recalculate every year. So we have the Jewish and Christian Easter, you have the Chinese New Year, you have the Muslim Ramadan, which all have to have uh, new dates every year. This fascination of the full moon and uh, the lunar calendars have made uh, a word which you may know, uh, remember, and that is lunatic. And it is true, that's, that's where it comes from. You should not follow the moon in everything. But the moon is extremely important. The moon commands the oceans. On this symbolic animation, we are at the red pointer. That's Fredrikstad. We rotate with Earth, and in the real model, the rotation of Earth would be actually a little bit faster. 
but this is mostly to show the high tide. The high tide is always under the moon. And then you have another high tide on the other side of the Earth, on the opposite side of the Earth, and that's just basic physics. Uh, I could have explained it, but uh, just believe me. You have <laughs> two high tides during the 23 hours and 57 minutes. Not 24 hours. The 23 hours and 57 minutes we use to rotate. Tides are extremely important for, for life on Earth, and the ebb and flow of the oceans decides how marine life behaves. Everyone fishing knows that. And again, you can say that movement creates life. These simple facts that I've described now is what nature cares about. So how can we collect this in a time device, a watch that describes this? Well, before I show that, I have one challenge for you. You see the orbit of Earth here? But at one point, every day, you are in front of Earth, in the speed direction, you could say. So whatever hits us in the orbit around the sun, say it's a dust cloud that makes meteor showers, you are at that point, and everybody in this room are at that point. Can you see what time that is on the day? The answer is, it's in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning, you are on, in the front of Earth. So the military would say, yeah, it's incoming at six o'clock. You're at the back of Earth uh, at 1800 in the evening. That's the sunset. Do you see that in this picture? And of course, 12 o'clock is when you have the sun. We, we have messed that up too, of course, with summertime and wintertime, but 12 o'clock, you, you should have the sun. That's midday. And then you have midnight which is when you look into the abyss of the universe. Uh, and that's a little bit before 24 hours, because we, as I said, we use 23 hours, 27 minutes to get, get around here. So <clears throat> the universe is not perfect, but we should not try to control time. We should follow it. We should try to uh, get along with it. So finally, I'm ready to show you how the watch should look. And it's no surprise when you've seen the animation. This is how the watch should look. You look down at the North Pole. Uh, Earth is rotating counterclockwise. The moon is orbiting counterclockwise. You have the, to help you, you have the human machine coordination time at the top. And the date shows where in the orbit we are around the sun. Of course, the season and everything. The sun is always at 12 o'clock, so we just put a solar symbol there. The Earth direction is 6 o'clock, so we just have an arrow there. And the whole public understands that. And the moon is positioned correctly, and with the lighting correctly from the sun. And you can imagine what kind of face it is when you look at it from Predigstad. Uh, and you see the small blob around there, that's the high tide and low tide of the water. So, um, 12.56 today, we're a little bit ahead in this uh, picture. Uh, then we are going into low tide here in Fredrikstad. We are rotating into low tide. We can make it uh, a little, yeah, and the white pointer is, of course, where we are. So when and where is the same in this watch. The shadow that you see on the back side here, that is the sunrise and sunset in Fredrikstad at this location, at this time, or this season. So here I put some more numbers on the watch to help those who don't like abstract things. And we can put much more on this. Uh, for example, I put three other time zones on it because they also follow this. Everybody follows this. So here I've chosen London, Houston, and Shanghai. And could be any uh, cities, but I call this empathy mode. We're living on the same pale blue dot, but we experience it very differently. 
And the red dot and the blue dot is actually the Chinese and International Space Station. They are moving much faster around here, so it's kind of fun to follow. And you could have other information also. So this is a digital watch. In its simplest form, you can also make a much more sophisticated one. And people like sophisticated things, especially when they know things. So <clears throat> this is uh, how a mechanical watch could look. Maybe this is something you will wear in the future, I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody will make such a watch. I think Copernicus would like this. Even though Earth is in the middle here, it is a heliocentric picture. And at the same time, you get down to Earth. This concept will increase your, our understanding and our value of space, nature, and time. And that's about time.